to go, believe it or not, they also have a gaming scene and some very interesting game designs like Panamax from Mesa Games and I'm here with Jill Dere. Uh you, you guys are with uh, Hedel, Heidelberger uh, this year who are distributing your game, your game Panamax. Uh, Panamax was launched last year at Spiel? Panamax was created uh, in the last uh, two years and a an half. Uh -huh. And last year in the Spiel, I was here in the Heidelberger booth with a prototype, not a final one, but almost final one. Uh, and last year we managed to make a con uh, to close a contract with Heidelberger to co-produce with us uh, a multi-language version. And uh, we also closed a contract with Stronghold Games to co-produce an uh, English version of the game. Also, we managed to, to do a contract with Agassi Distribuzione to make the Italian version of this game. So it's, it's been very widely accepted and very widespread now. Uh, tell me a little bit about the game. What is Panamax all about? Well, Panamax is a game about the Canama, Panama Canal, okay? And each player is managing a company and is trying to make money for his own, not for the company, okay? But of course, if you don't if your company don't profit, you will not have any money. Okay? There are two main things in the game. You transport um, things from one side of the canal from another, from contracts that you have, or, and also you manage uh, to buy an, uh, some bonds that can go higher or lower and distribute dividends. So it's an economical game, but with a very thematic uh, um, rules and uh, with a lot of ships in the in the in the game real ships sometimes a real military ships uh, transportation ships or cruise ships you have a lot of uh, ver variety in the game uh, the game looks very varied very complex what are the basics uh, of of the game well, the game is not as complex as in the fir uh, first sight we can see, look and say, oh, this is a lot of things. But I think most of the rules are very easy to understand. And after the second or third round, you are completely in the game and fully understand everything. Uh, but the game, uh, 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 it works like normally each player will choose one dice from the, the, the dice, the, the action dice, and do just one action. So it's very simple. So you, don't have, you don't have many, many, many things to do. Of course, this action can have, can have a lot of consequences during the game. So you have to think a lot about what, what are you doing. But basically the, the player choose to move a ship or to choose a contract and load some cargo in ships. Basically, this is the two main actions the player do during the game. How have you kept the, the theme of the game relevant to the game mechanics themselves? How did you manage to match them? Okay, this was interesting because at the beginning of, the, um, of, the, uh, of this game, this was supposed to be a fam familiar game. And um, uh, I noticed this doesn't work like that. So, what I do, did, I invited Paulo and Nuno Centiero, the authors of Madeira. They are not here at the moment, but they also are the authors of the game. And we transformed this game in a medium-heavy economical game. Okay, so it's not as much complicated as it looks like, okay? But uh, um, what, what we try to do, it's the thematic part of the family fits completely in the in the in the economical part of the game and that's one of my jobs during the creation of this game is uh, don't let Paulo and Uno go away from the theme okay during the creation of the game for you what was the greatest challenge well maybe maybe the economical part the market part because it was very complicated to 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 have a, a correct balance of everything of the values thing. the other parts were also complicated of course because in this kind of game you have to test a lot tests take a very long time and you just change one detail and everything falls apart or everything fits together so uh, it everything was 
quite complicated. Yes, there is a lot of pleasure doing that, but complicated. But the most complicated part was the market, uh, market part. Now that the game is out and, and it's going to be very widely available, um, what's going to happen with your company? Are you going to continue creating games? Are you already have something working? My company, Mesa Board Games, is a small, very small company from Portugal, and we have two uh, uh, two strategic options in the, in uh, uh, in our, for for the next years. First, in Portugal, in Portugal, we create, produce, and distribute and sell. Uh, games only for the Portuguese market. Simple game with very thematic themes about Portugal and uh, with a, a price not very high, okay? But with high quality, we hope so, okay, at least. For the international market, our aim is to find other partners like Strongholds, Heidelberger, etc., to make co-productions. And that way, we manage to reach the market itself and we don't have to have a... Uh, uh, a web of people trying to sell in, in some countries that we don't know. In, in, for example, in Germany, it's Heidelberger who arranged everything. In the United States, it's Heidelberger. It's the way, that's why, in essence, we don't have a booth, because in the international market, we work only with co-editions. That's our objective for the, for the next years. Well, sir, I very much look forward to finding out what your next game is going to be like. Because if it's anything like Panamax, it's very exciting indeed. Thank you very much for your kind words.